Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on refactoring some of the logic in our battle scene into its own class. Uh, if you missed the previous video, uh, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There'll also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so next what we'll do is we're actually gonna create our enemy monster class. Uh, so we're just gonna validate that we're able to extend our battle monster class and we'll use that in our battle scene. Uh, so to do that is in our source code under battle monsters, we'll add in a new class. So we'll do enemy battle monster. We'll do .js. Then what we'll do is we'll do export class enemy battle monster. And then to extend the class, we'll use the extends keyword, and now we're going to do our battle monster. And then so since we're extending a class, the first thing we'll want to do is you need to call super, and we need to provide our configuration and our position. Uh, so to do that, what we need to do is we actually need the same types here. Um, and... What we're going to end up doing is we're going to move this logic to a common type def file. And the reason for that is some of our type defs here will want to use across multiple files in our code base. And so it doesn't make sense for it to live in our battle monster class. Instead, it's going to live in this one common shared file. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll come to our types folder. Let's go ahead and add in a new file. And we're just going to call this typedef.js. And so this will be our own custom types. And so I'm just going to copy the type definitions for our custom objects we've created. We'll remove model battle monster. Let's place them in our typedef.js file. And just to keep our code clean, what we're going to do is we're going to import phaser from our lib and then our phaser.js. So now that we have our common file, what we need to do is we actually need to update our imports. So if we come back to Battle Monster, if we go ahead and let our IntelliSense, it'll go ahead and update our imports. Uh, so we do monster, we'll import from types, type def.js, then monster, and then we should be able to do the same for the rest of these. So if we do our Battle Monster config, and then if we do our coordinate, and perfect. So now our code is updated and then what we'll do is we come back to our enemy battle monster what we should be able to do is for our config we'll add that to our constructor we'll go ahead and add in our js doc types so what we'll do is for our param uh, we're going to expect our battle monster config for our config and we'll go ahead and pass that to the super method. And now for our positioning, uh, what we'll do is we will just go ahead and add those values here since it's in our enemy monster class. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll just make a new object to store these. So we're gonna do const enemy position. And we'll do object.freeze so we don't modify these. And for our X, we'll have our 768, our Y will be 144. And we're just going to go ahead and add our type for this. So we'll have our at type. And this is going to be our coordinate. All right, and then what we should be able to do is now in our super method, if we go ahead and pass an enemy position. All right, so now that we have our new class, what we'll do is we'll jump back over to our battle scene and we're going to update our references. So for our enemy monster, we're not going to use battle monster. We're actually going to use our enemy battle monster class. Then, and then so what we'll do is when we create our enemy instance, we'll create our enemy battle monster and we won't need to pass in our position since it's in that class now. And then so what we'll do is come back to enemy bottle monster. Let's go ahead and fix our imports so with .js. And when our scene refreshes, we should still see our enemy game object and our health bar. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over to our battle monster class. And now we're gonna add in a few more properties and getters for uh, things we'll be doing quite frequently. Uh, so 
after we cut our phaser game object, uh, what we'll do is we're going to add a new protected property for current health. We'll add in a new protected property for max health. And then we'll go ahead and add in a protected property for monster attacks. And so real quick for our types, we'll go ahead and just copy that line there. We'll paste it a few times. And so for current health, we'll have number. For our max health, we'll have number. And then for attacks, um, this is going to be a new type. And so for our monster attacks, we're not going to want just the IDs. Uh, we're going to need to know uh, the name of the attack, the ID, how much damage it can do, and uh, if there's any description tied to it, uh, maybe how many times that attack will go off, the accuracy, um, and different things like that. And so this is actually going to be an array of objects. And so we need to define this object. And so what we'll do is we'll jump back over to our type def JS file. And inside here, uh, let's go ahead and add in a new object. So I'm just going to copy this here paste that here and we'll call this attack. And so our type will be an object. Um, for the time being, we're just gonna do the ID of our attack. We'll do the name of our attack. And then let's go ahead and add an animation name uh, just so we know what the uh, asset key, what the animation key uh, for this attack would be. I'm just gonna add this in here now. So we'll have animation name and these both will be strings so we'll go ahead and update that and then oh since our id is going to be a number let's go ahead and fix our attack ids to be an array of numbers as well so now that we have our new type what we'll do is we're going to reference that type for our monster attacks and it's going to be an array then what we'll do is in our constructor and then so what we'll do is we'll do our current health will be equal to our monster details. And we'll set it equal to our current HP. This dot max health will equal to this monster details dot our max health. And then so for our monster attacks, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to an empty array. All right, so I'm just adding some additional properties here. So then that way we don't always have to type out this monster details, max HP, current HP. Um, and then that way we can add getters to this particular property here. Um, it just, it, it'll be a little less typing uh, later on. So then what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and add a couple getters. Uh, so we'll come below our constructor. Let's do get, and we'll go ahead and do is fainted. And so this is going to return a Boolean. Uh, so we're going to do return this. We're going to reference our current health. And if our current health is less than or equal to zero. And then for our type, I'm just going to copy this here. Go ahead and paste that. It won't be protected. And then we'll just do Boolean for our type. And so what we'll do is we're going to copy these few lines of code and we're going to go ahead and add one for our monster name. Uh, so this will be a string and we'll want to return this monster details and our monster name. Uh, this will be used for like when we want to update our text uh, in our battle menu. Uh, so we'll be able to grab the name property. Then we'll want to go ahead and do attacks. So if we need to get the attacks that are available, uh, so this will be our attack array. And instead of returning a direct reference, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of our array. And then that way, if anything changes uh, on the array, it won't affect our current instance of it, since it'll be a copy of it. Because uh, otherwise, what would happen is if we return the array, and if we modify those objects directly, it's going to actually modify our protected uh, instance of it, and we don't want that. Finally, let's go ahead and add in one for our base attack, and then that way we know what the value is. We'll do as we'll do get our base attack, and we will return our monster details, and we will have our base attack, and this will be a number. 
All right, so for the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new method for taking damage. And what that'll do is we will take an amount of damage and we'll use that to actually update our health bar uh, component. So what we're going to do is we'll make a new method. We'll do take damage. And so we'll expect damage for one of our params and then a callback. And so inside our method, uh, what we're going to do is we'll update current monster health and animate health bar. So we're going to do this, our current health, and we're going to subtract the amount of damage that the monster just took. Then we're going to check that if our current health is less than zero, we're just going to go ahead and set our current health to zero. And then that way it can never go uh, to a negative number. And then finally, what we'd want to do is in our health bar, we would want to go ahead and actually update it. So we're going to take our current health and we're going to divide it by our max health uh, to get our percentage of how uh, much we should update our health bar. And then we will provide our callback. And then we just need to go ahead and add in our types. So let's just add in that real quick. And so for our damage, this is going to be a number. Our callback will be a function that returns void. And we'll make our callback optional. And we'll go ahead and save. So now if we want to go ahead and test our take damage method real quick, we're going to jump over to our battle scene and we'll come down to right after we update our player health bar. Let's go ahead and reference our active enemy monster and we'll do take damage. And just for testing, let's go ahead and do 10. We'll go ahead and save. And so see our health bar is updated. And if we go ahead and let's go ahead and just, you know, let's do 25. It should knock out our monster. And if we do 30, it should still work. And what we'll do is just to validate our is fainted is working. We're going to do this dot active enemy monster is fainted. We'll council log it and it's true. Perfect. Now, so if we do 15, it should be false. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to continue working on creating our monster uh, classes. And so what we'll do is we'll create one for our player, and then we're going to finish taking in our logic from our battle scene and adding that to our battle monster class. Uh, so this will involve like creating our container game object for our health bar, and all of that will be self-contained inside our class. Uh, so as a reminder, uh, there is a link in the description of the video uh, to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Fraser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.